Hey Inspirators, it's Inspiring Vanessa here and welcome back to another wonderful interview for all of you. I hope you all are doing well, staying safe, trying to maintain a positive mindset. Um, today I had quite a jam-packed day it feels like, but this is a very nice way to kind of finish off my evening you can say. I am very very excited for today's guest. Um, I've been following him on social media for quite a while so it's really really nice that I'm actually going to have the chance to interview him and see his perspective on his journey obviously because we as viewers and fans and followers only get to see a certain part of a creator's lifestyle you could say so I'm very very excited for today's guest and today's guest is in fact a TikToker, a content creator you might like to say and he is also a body confidence advocate and his name is Stephen Mikkel. He is so so lovely. I've met him before at I believe somewhere in the city at a YouTube social media convention um, but I'm very very excited to be talking to him today. Um, we've also I believe like kind of collaborated we did me on a mission um and i was sending in a video of me dancing which was actually choreographed by steven so everything you kind of connect the dots backwards basically but i'm going to bring him onto this interview and we can just get straight into the first question my choker keeps moving up and down <laughs> Hello! Hi, how are you? Oh I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really well, I'm really well. I'm excited to have this little chat, this little interview. I'm really excited little to have this little interview. Day. I'm very, very yeah. excited as well. I'm just going to put my volume up a little bit. But um, how was your day? What have, you been, what have you been doing so far? My day's been all right. It's been very chill. Um, I made some content earlier on, um, but I actually had just kind of like a, a chill day. I know you've had a bit of a busy day, so I was like, oh, well, I've had a chill day, so it's a bit smash. <laughs> yeah, I've just, I've chilled mostly, um, watching some Netflix, made some videos, and then um, kind of just put like my phone away a little bit and was kind of like just zen, you know, you got to have those days. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to always have a nice relaxing day as well. What Netflix show are you watching or movie? I'm watching, I'm watching Pose. I've watched it before, but I'm watching it. Um, it's um, it's got the, the guy that created like Glee and stuff. He created it. It's a really, really, really amazing um, TV series about the ballroom in like the early oh, wow. 90s. It's so good. It's, it's educational. It's fun. It's sassy. So like, I'm, I'm re-watching it again. I'm just like, yeah, work, work. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Oh, I haven't heard of that, so I'm definitely going to look into that as well. You'll love it, it's so good. You were mentioning like, it's so good, I know you will, it's great, it's great. I mean, I, I love re-watching TV shows. Even though you know it's going to happen, it, sometimes mm -hmm. it always just gets better every time you watch it. I yes, don't know how I'm, it works. Honestly, I love that. There's so many TV shows I just watch, re-watch all the time. Big Bang Theory is one of them, Glee is one of them, and I'm like, I know what happens at the end, but I still want to watch it because, I don't know, I love it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, we're going to jump into the first question, which okay. is when did you start social media and why did you start social media? I started social media, I think I'll say it would be June 2016. I think that's what I'll, very specific, it was June 5th, but that's when I started TikTok anyway. But that's why I started taking it a bit more seriously and I, and I wanted to do it because um, I didn't really see anyone else like me doing kind of like short snappy kind of content mm -hmm. so I was like oh, I just want to go and have fun and see what it's like and it was musically back in the day and I um, was like okay I'll go and have fun and it just kind of like spiraled from there it was like after posting the first video I was like I enjoy this so much this is like it was a mixture between like you know YouTube and like a, a, something like Vine in a way so it's kind of like oh my gosh I'm just, I have found my home and after that it was like <laughs> people enjoyed watching me and I enjoyed making videos so it just kind of spiraled on like from there which is yeah it's been four and a half years now so it's crazy I mean four years I've pretty much been doing social media at the same time obviously mm -hmm. I didn't really start off properly on like music you can say the, yeah. the OG days um, for some <laughs> of us uh, but I started off on YouTube but I know that like the way the app has grown so much just blows my mind all the time uh, thank you to those who are tuning in right now if you have any questions leave them down below um yes. but that sounds so amazing how you just kind of started i think 
although social media kind of has a bit of like a bad reputation among mm-hmm. society, it really is a place where people find themselves and actually find people who are going to love who they are. Exactly, I totally agree. I think I didn't really find myself like 100% until I started social media. I think that it's okay to do that. I think a lot of people, you know, are kind of worried when they're like 50 or 16, like, I need to find myself. And it's like, no, 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 don't. Just like, and if you do, that's great. Because I think for me, I was kind of like, I thought I had, and then I started social media and I was like, wow, okay, this is actually who I am. Um, but it, it kind of it showed me who I was and what I wanted to be and um, you know, with, with good and bad. So it was kind of like, a, I've done some YouTube as well, like for a little bit, but. I just don't know what it is. I don't. I love watching YouTube videos. I love watching YouTube videos, but myself, I just don't feel. I don't have passion. Um, it's probably because I don't really. I'm not that great at great at editing or whatever. But I don't have the passion to kind of put long form media because it takes a lot more work to do YouTube. I would say that that does to say do TikTok or even short Instagram kind of videos. But yeah, four and a half years, nearly half a decade. It's crazy. Wow, I never even thought about that. <laughs> I know. I feel old. <laughs> yeah, oh my so- gosh. Five Next year is going to be five years for both of us. It's going to be half a decade. Half a decade. That of sounds our lives. so crazy. I know. I think about that. I think that just seems a bit. I don't know. That just seems like such a long time, but it's yeah. gone by so quick, though. Like I really, it feels like the last few years have just been zoom, and it's kind of like <laughs> well, what's going just on? Gone by. It's yeah, so, it's gone so by. Fast. It's crazy. And it's so weird as well because it feels like you like you just started yesterday, but then also it feels like such a long time because you remember all the different events and where you kind of started and where you ended up now. So it's it's very crazy to think about time and all. <laughs> it's so crazy as well because I think that a lot of people as well when it comes to social media, like you find that um, it doesn't happen overnight. Some for some people it does, and you know, slight jealousy for that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> It, it doesn't happen overnight and you understand that as well that it takes a lot of just the hard grind and I, I enjoy that though and I think when I've done some interviews like this I've said regardless of what social media it is I think that I've been, I'm grateful for having to put the work in in a sense because then it, it, it makes you like, kind of tough enough and you know if you have ups and downs so like I've, I've enjoyed it, it's been great, it's been, it's been I'm nearly five years, I can't believe that. My cat is outside my door. Oh, I have a cat as well. She always pops up in interviews here and then. She's like at the <laughs> door, and, and but she doesn't want to come in. So she's like playing the What's system. your cat's I name? I call her Stossy. But, um, oh, Stossy, my cat S-T- is Joey. Oh, Stossy and Joey. But I've tried to let her in, but she, you know, when they don't want to come in, they just want to kind of annoy they you and then run away. peek around. I mean, my cat will literally just go insane any time she get attention. No, oh, my wife had to sit on my bed and stuff, and if, if like I'm not clapping her, she'll like she'll come in and sit on my face, and I'm like, it's five in the morning, you need to get off my face. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, no, she's like out in the hallway. So if you hear anything banging, it's the cat mm, hitting something around. It's probably one of its toys, but yeah. <laughs> Cats are very, very, very odd animals. Yeah. Um, but the next question is kind of speaking of like the roller coaster of a journey that mm. you can say that you that you've had. Would you say it was hard for you to grow on TikTok or musically? If so, why? Um, it was harder to grow on musically. Oh, well, I suppose that's what the question is on, on both of them, I think. I think it was hard for me the first two years, which was musically years, it was difficult to grow on. I think I had, for the time I went to musically, I had like 170k, which is a lot. Wow. Um, you know, it's still, it's still quite a lot, but for two years, it was really like, like it was a lot of just like, I, I was like stuck at like 60k, but before that, it was like just. I had to wait for a video to blow up and I get more followers. Where with TikTok, it's been it was hard to start with, but now I think it's consistent. Uh, and I'm, I enjoy the, the growth that I'm having and kind of like just consistently. Because the big thing is trying to retain the people that follow you. Because on TikTok, you can get big and it goes to like around the world and you know people can see it in America and Russia or whatever. But um, it doesn't mean all your videos are going to get seen there when you post after that. So it's like trying to retain the followers, but. It's been pretty, the last two years is when it's been kind of popped off. So I've kind of I've just tried to change my content up for the algorithm or the elusive algorithm that no one has an idea what's going on. But um, I think it's it's been good and bad. There's been like a lot of times where I've, like you don't want to focus on views, but you do anyway, and then it kind of that kind of stops me like putting out maybe like really great videos and like the growth then suffers from that. So it's kind of like a little vicious circle, but it's fun at the, at the same time. So it's kind of like helps me learn a lot. But the last two years I've really been like just consistent and I've, been, I've enjoyed it. It's, I've, I've been happy with it. Um, and I thought like um, being in lockdown would be like, 
it'd go one or two ways really, it'd either go like downhill or it'd pop off but I'm just still just gradually just doing my thing so I'm happy with that. <laughs> I mean consistency is just so important. I don't think people actually understand the value of it and literally every single algorithm on any social media platform you go onto they all favour consistency. Yeah. You can be on a social media app that's the biggest of the biggest or it's just starting off and you can grow like from here to here just if mm -hmm. you're posting consistently and posting your videos on a gradual uh, kind of routine. I absolutely agree. I think it's, it also gives like the creator and the content creator structure to what to, to post yeah, and kind of definitely. like it gets you into that. If you want to make that as like a business, it gets you into that kind of mindset a little bit. So I think consistency is always key. It's always the first part of advice if someone asks you what to do on like consistency and you might think, oh, okay, but stick to, have a schedule, stick to it. But um, yeah, I, you're completely right. Every platform I've been on, it's always been about consistency over everything else. <laughs> always. And Go also, on. would you say that um, on Musical.ly and TikTok, obviously I feel like the content has slightly changed a little bit because TikTok seems a bit more broad for any type of creator you mm -hmm. can say. So would you mm -hmm. say that the algorithm got harder when it turned into TikTok or it became easier? Or would I you say what's the difference? I think with, with Musical.ly it was a lot of, everyone just knew it was a lip sync app and I think even TikTok does have that elements of that but it's so much more than that now, it's so evolved. I, I feel like to start with the algorithm on TikTok kind of, everyone kind of, if you were making content that was very like um, authentic, even if it was just dancing or singing or whatever it is, it favoured you because I think, I don't know how they do it but I think I think that they kind of know when something just feels authentic, if that makes sense, and it makes sense if you're making videos. But I feel like um, it, it's, been, it's been both things. I, I, I've definitely succeeded on it. Like when I first went to TikTok, I think I the algorithm helped me. And I think now it's kind of like in the middle. No one really knows. It, it changes all the time. Like some minutes they love, sometimes they love like longer, like minute long videos. Sometimes they don't. They sometimes they say you know between seven and fifteen seconds is the best time. Now it's fifteen to twenty. So it changes all the time. And like and as a as a creator, no matter if you're someone who's really close to TikTok or, or has contact, no one really gets to know. You kind of just have to figure it out for yourself. But I, d I do think a TikTok algorithm was better than Musical.ly for me. Anyway, um, I think that it kind of recognised hard work and it recognised, like you said, consistency. And I think with Musical.ly, you kind of just could post whenever you wanted, really. Um, and it didn't really matter because like, if you built your following, you had it, that was it. And then anyone else after that, it was hard to grow after that. So. I think with TikTok it's been broader, like you said, it's it, it's just it's mad. It's comedy, um, like um, college play, like just um, just it so just many goes different from kind of everything. Yeah, and anyone can really. And I was on this um, this workshop today, this like webinar thing with like creator monetization thing, and they were saying that they don't, they, you know, they don't um, focus on like your, what, how big you are as a creator, but your actually your content, what you post, so like. Every video has the potential to go viral depending on if it hits all the right check marks. It's like, you know, how much I believe that I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> you see some videos on the For You page that are like, how did that get there? And you don't know. And then some things are just weird, but they're, they're weird fun in, in the sense, you know, there's something you wouldn't see on any other platform. I think that's why it's successful. Mm. They're just very unique. There's just so many different types of creators on there. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like anyone can go on there and you're like you may not go like charlie d'amelio viral yeah. but <laughs> oh, no, there's going to be some kind of impact that's going to be made then i saw someone calling i miss the lip syncing days i feel like we all do um, yeah, so, we all do. yeah and if you're watching this on live comment down below which one you prefer tiktok or musically you want to see your answers down below yes yeah, what do you think guys tiktok or musically i mean i think some people are going to see Musical.ly. If you're an OG, like, it's, it's, and it's hard to say that because a lot of people don't really know what the Musical.ly days, but they were very, they were they were <laughs> fun. They were very much just, it was very lip syncing. It was very like, ooh. And I think some part of that element still, I think Charlie D'Amelio really kind of encompasses all of the whole app's life. And in, in the last, like, how many years, five years, that, that app's been, or the servers have been up. She really does like, kind of, she does lip syncing, and dances stuff. She, she kind of makes it all right to kind of, shows you that you can put any kind of video out there and it will do well. Not bashing her in it at all, she's like what, 90 million. Yeah. She, she's definitely doing well, anyway. <laughs> definitely, I think she's almost at 100 million. Yeah, I know she's, it's just madness. But I do think that she's a good, <laughs> we're talking to her, I think she's, she's a good, I say role model, I think that 
I don't know if that's like a word for abuse. But she is someone that like I enjoy watching, I think, and she's just doing her own thing. That's what I like about her in the sense that she really is just doing her own thing and she really is not letting anyone take that away from her. If she wants to sit and lip sync, she's going to do it. If she wants to go a dance, she's going to do it. Um, and it's just, it's, it, it's fun. It's fun to see American content be UK in, um, in terms of what we can post, because I can post what people in America do, because it wouldn't work for me. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 it's crazy. Would you say that TikTok kind of, or the TikTok algorithm kind of favours a certain type of creator? Like they need to be American, they need to kind of be like, you can say like the standards of beauty or like, I don't mm-hmm. know, the specific like, the the ideal influencer, oh, yeah. that kind of image, would you say that TikTok favours that? I, yeah, I would, I, I would say TikTok does to a certain extent. I think that's because people want to see that. If that makes you know people that are like on there like to see these people that are, um, you know, chiselled and just look like just the, the normal like the, what they what you think like an, an influencer would be basically. So I think mm. they are. I think in, the TikTok does favour that in a sense. I mean, but there is it's, I say that, but there is also a massive pool of creators on TikTok, and it's mad, and it's and and they're from all shapes and sizes and sexualities and orientations and places in the world which I don't think any other platform has that kind of diversity but I do think that the the, the, the algorithm or TikTok do favour um, the the perfect type so to speak which no one's perfect really but I do I do think that yeah. there is an element of that and you can see that in, the, in the, the for you page or or what people that are getting big on the platform and staying relevant um, and they might not necessarily put in as much effort or time as someone like like me or yourself um, but some of the videos are still fun to watch and I think it's one of those things that I think as a creator if you're focusing too much on like what someone else is doing then don't do that oh god it's so bad I've been there and I've done that and it's so it's so tough to kind of not focus on someone else's content and like just focus on your own it's really tough to do that because everyone's different and everyone thinks you make content because you're passionate about it because you have a voice to speak to people but short answer yes I think TikTok does favour a certain type of person whether that be their attitude where they're from um, I think Americans. I think Americans get it easy, and I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm say this. I'm, the reason why I say that is I think they get it easy in terms of the content they can make and how viral they can go. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I would love to do like you know, dancing all the time. I love dancing, but TikTok doesn't favour that content of mine. It used to, but doesn't now. And it's like, so I'd love to be in America and do like um, all the amazing stuff they do. And, yeah. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. I mean, I feel like TikTok is slowly getting to a place where they are just favouring any type of creator that just works hard in their content or just enjoying what they're doing, which I think is the most important thing when you want to be a music yeah. creator. And you want to make other people feel happy when they watch your content. Um, so I think they are kind of getting a bit more like diverse, not even just in ethnicities or appearances, but mm-hmm. also, as you were saying, like sexualities as well. It's kind of just. It is slowly, but it needs to happen just a little bit faster. We just need to yeah. kind of <laughs> just check the time, just kind of get yeah. the algorithm, just do its thing a little bit faster. But mm-hmm. I feel like we are getting to a place gradually. We just need to keep pushing that. Oh, for sure. And I think two years ago to now, the change has been immense. It's been absolutely Definitely. great. And I think that and when I see the things in terms of TikTok favouring people, that that can be up to some person that's just in an office hitting buttons we don't know because the, the experience i've had with tiktok um you know nine times out of ten it's just been amazing in terms of seeing the because i think tiktok community the community you have on tiktok has it, it trumped any other platform in my opinion and i'm on instagram and i've done youtube and stuff i think with tiktok the community you can build on that and the fan the fan base that become like part of your family in a sense so i think that they're definitely going in the right direction like you said and they're making big changes it's just a lot of it quicker would be great <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so we're going to move on to our third question, which is I think every single influencer, content creator, TikToker, Instagrammer, just any person who posts content online all goes through some sort of negativity, whether it's really broad, whether it's just one nasty person in their comments. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question is, how do you deal with hate and negativity online? How have you dealt with that in the past and maybe now even? Yeah, I think that, you know, I think it bothered me in the past that it bothered my followers um, that used to try and defend me. I used to be like, don't do that because like, these haters will come for you, you know, and they may not have, may not have as tough a skin as I do. 
Um, and I think when I my first video that I posted, I got I got negative comments. And I said to my mom, and I was like, Oh my god, mom, I'm like I'm just posting these random videos, and people are saying like horrible stuff. And I'm quite a confident person. I'm kind of like I just walk off the duck's back. And she said to me, the advice she gave was, you've got two options. You can sit and reply to all these comments and really try and fight your own corner, and you'll argue with these people because they, they don't understand you, they don't want to understand you, or you can just say that that's a you problem, not a me problem, and I don't I don't have to deal with that. And I was like. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do then, and that, I think that's the kind of that's the kind of advice that I have, or, or what I've been through is when I sometimes I'll take maybe negativity and turn it into con- content and be like, and also blow the names out because hate on hate doesn't work, but also I don't want to give them out. But like turn it into content and educate. But I think that I get with it in a way that's trying to I acknowledge it and people talk talk to me about it. I try and say that you know I get hate. Everyone gets everyone will have some sort of hate or negativity. Because that's just like that's the that's just how that's life the, is, unfortunately. Yeah, especially <laughs> on social media. Regardless, if you if you want to do pursue so, pursue social media as part of your career or and try to make a name for yourself, or or you're just someone who's on Facebook posting something and then someone can just leave a negative comment. It happens worldwide to anyone, and I think my my advice would always be is um, that's a them problem, not a you problem, because they don't know you and they're not going and they don't want to get to know you, and that's the that's fundamental part of someone being a troll or, or negativity is they've got something something going on in their life that they are unhappy about or they want to project onto you and you just and I, it's easier said than done just to say ignore it because I read some comments and I'm like I don't want to ignore that I want to read them for self but I, you, you can't and I think that's always the best that we have dealt with it is kind of know that's happening and just let it go over my head like I, I don't I don't need to read them I don't need to um process what they're saying because it's, their opinions don't matter, their own opinions don't matter or opinion of myself, my loved ones and people that support what I do. Mm. And you'll have the same, you'll have the same, a lot of, you know, other things that you're doing, you'll have people that are wanting to be negative for no reason and it's like, why? You don't even know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I just want to give you a massive round of applause. Like, if everyone could just, if Thank everyone you. could just spam the comments with a little clapping emoji, that would I'm be fantastic. Emoji. But, like, everything you've just said, people just need to keep thinking about that like that is so important everything you just said like it literally is just a reflection of themselves and their own personal problems rather than you because you're you're not doing anything wrong you don't even know the person so how would you be affecting them negatively or harming them in any way if you Mm -hmm. haven't even spoken to them before so thank you for sharing that as well i think it's just so so important people need to understand you can just clap back in the kindest way possible mm-hmm. um, and just kind of just accept it and accept that people can't accept themselves and that's why they can't accept other people. That's the, that's the yeah, simplest that's, way of saying it. That is exactly the simplest way of, of doing it. And I think that it's really important for um, us to kind of come on here and even chat and just, just say that. I think that um, regardless of what kind of negativity you are getting, whether it's personal, family, friends, or in the public who don't even know you, it is just about um, not letting it get to you because mm. it really it will just it will just, just destroy so many people and it's and I know sometimes it's tough but but you've got one life and you've got to live it the way you want to do it not what someone else is saying you know you only live once guys you only live once so <laughs> yeah, exactly. make it, just make just make it make it worthwhile is the best way of putting it definitely Preach. I love it <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, so you are also um, or you also said that you're a body confidence advocate. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to feel more confident in their own skin? Brilliant question. I love it. Um, I think that I, for me, in terms of advice I give to someone is, is, is you know, don't don't shy away from maybe the negative. Sometimes when you wake up and you feel a bit negative, don't shy away from, I'm just going to ignore that and not really pay attention to my mental health, what my mind's thinking about my body, because that's really what it comes from is your mind and how you think about yourself. I always give this advice and it sounds so cheesy and so like, I'm not going to do that, right? But it does work. And, and when I say body confidence, that's not just for plus size people, it's from someone, people of every size or, or the way that you look at yourself, okay? I always say when you go in and you look in the mirror in the morning, you just, I, I always say, and I do it myself, I'm, I'm not doing great, I'm just like, you, you got this. You are amazing, you are flawless, you are going to rule this world. And, I, and I'm so sassy about it because that's part of my personality. But I just tell myself in the mirror, I'd be like, you've got this, and like, no one, no one's going to stop you feeling great today, even if you don't feel great. Because I think that sometimes it's that positive uh, reaffirming of yourself. That's always the advice I always give: is tell yourself every day, you are amazing, you've got this, it's your body, and it's no one else's opinion on it. And I think that that will get people through even hard days. And in days when you feel great, 
because the more you do that, the more you start to believe it and the more you start to become comfortable with yourself. Then after that comes the whole transformation of like how you think about, about yourself mentally and you're like, no one's gonna stop me. And, and it's great to see some people that have done that, that I've known, I've been like, wow, like the, the simplest advice of just actually not pushing it to the side and saying, okay, I feel like this today. I need to, I, I know I feel, I, I don't feel, feel, I don't like the way I look, or I don't like the way I, my hair is or whatever it is and take tackling it head on and saying, saying and getting over that in the morning and be like, I'm perfect the way I am. Sometimes it looks sound cheesy and sometimes it'll be like, oh my gosh, that's, I'm not going to do that and I feel stupid or I don't feel better. But the more you do it, the more it happens. I've done it, that's what I've done for years. And then, and then I just kind of deluded in myself and people, like, convinced myself and then that was it. And I think that that's the kind of way it is. And um, like I said, it's, it's uh, body confidence is such like a tricky thing as well because it's it's like it's mental health and it's how you look and or how you feel um so yeah tell yourself you're amazing every day because you are there's only one you in this life and you've got to live it good authentic way i mean preach once again <laughs> like you're, 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 you should just take my role as a motivational speaker <laughs> literally no, like, no, I'll, no, no. I'll just, you I'll just are, give it to you um you that is perfect. just so amazing that everything you're saying um I don't feel like I actually understand as well. Like the same with consistency, that affirmations make such a massive difference. It's like, if you're gonna tell yourself you're tired, then you're gonna be tired. Yeah. So if you're gonna tell yourself that I feel great today, then you're gonna feel great today. Like yeah. your brain will literally just take in any information that you tell it to do. So mm -hmm. think about that and speak it into existence or whatever you believe in. Just put that out there i feel like just people don't yeah. understand it until you actually try it out exactly that's and it's so powerful to to just to put something into the world and and, and say that this is what i want and this is how i want to feel and this is what how i want to love myself and that does and you like i said the days you'll be like i'm not saying that and i don't want to love myself i don't feel like it and then you do and the more you push through that those days become further and further apart and then you kind of turn into the, a complete confidence Monster, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> a confidence monster. That's what we're trying to make you guys into. That's it. <laughs> Just be as confident as possible. The max. Or even 100%. 120%. 1,000%. 100%. Yes, 1,000%. Just, <laughs> just above, above the sky. Above the, <laughs> above the limit. Um, I love it. Yes, definitely. Um, so the next question is, um, have you ever thought about quitting social media? Yes, I have. I think that... It's, it's 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 so weird because I think that um, yeah it's, it's so weird I have thought about that especially you know the first like two years into doing just social media in general which I was doing YouTube mm. and you know musically or TikTok or whatever I was kind of like it's not going anywhere I'm not really kind of feeling like myself like is this kind of, is this what I want to do so it was a lot of like me just felt like doubting myself a little bit and thinking is this really going to go anywhere or and try to take myself out the mindset of views and likes and that's not what it's about although they help but I think that when I got into like doing this more, kind of I can balance that out. But I have thought a few times that July past there, just this July was a really tough month. And um, just in terms of like social media and like, like the, after a few months of lockdown, I was helping all my friends like kind of get through it after the first few months. Then I was then feeling the effect of it and it was like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be like this for a long time now. And I had a lot of stuff in the pipeline to, to film and do it. And it's so like after that, I was kind of like, oh my God, is there even a point of that? And then I realized that, you know, I, I do what I do because that one person that says, hey, your content made me laugh today, or it made me feel great. I'm like, oh, it's my job done. And that's like really what I want to do. I want to then inspire people and not focus on like just views and likes and stuff. And I, and I get sometimes annoyed by it. And I'm like, oh, that's it. But it shouldn't be a part of like, what, what I do. But I've definitely thought about it. Like it's crossed my mind a few times. But probably maybe once, like two years ago, I was like, I'm going to do it. There's no point in this. And then uh, the next day I was like, no, I'll be fine. I've just got to keep posting it and like do something that I love. But yeah, I think any, I think there's all, like any 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 person on social media consistently will have a moment where they're like, "Is this really what I want to do? Is this, is this really what I want need like want to put myself a through?" A content you know what I mean? crisis. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, I've had so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> content crisis. Yes, yeah, you think you think I have nothing, and you think I will never think of any more videos to do, and um, none of my videos are going to relate to anyone, and you have that whole mental breakdown. And, and then the next day, you're like, oh, I've got about like five videos I've just planned out, and they're mm -hmm. so unique to me. You're like, Bruh. and it's so mad because you think, how did I manage to get from, I'm going to quit, to, oh, I've got some videos in my film, and yeah. it doesn't matter if they don't do well because I know that I've put a lot of effort into them. So it's, 
it's all mental, isn't it? It's all... mm, definitely. But thank goodness you didn't quit those two years ago. Otherwise, you wouldn't be where you are today. Exactly. I mean, we don't we don't know what we what we do without you, honestly. But <laughs> I definitely <laughs> I definitely agree with you as well. Um, I mean, I haven't quit social media before, but I've taken breaks from social media and doing YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. I used to do daily videos um, oh, when I was. Wow when I was in year eight, so two years ago, I think, something around that time. And at the start, I was like, okay, this is wonderful. My channel is just going to blossom. This is going to be amazing. And can I, I, I can't even put into words how stressful it was and how my mental health was suffering so much. Um, so yeah. although people do think about quitting social media, it's okay to take a break to focus Absolutely. on your own mental health as well but I mean just thank goodness you didn't quit and I mean you always you're always gonna have ideas the next day yeah and I always think it's just that kind of just overthinking moment that I feel like every every content creator has it's it's very stressful but at least we at least we pick ourselves up after it that's the most important thing yeah for sure I think yeah that's absolutely correct it's like it's just it's all about picking yourself up after it and being like you can have a few days or a time where you take a break i think that's really encouraged to kind of not stress yourself out i think i need to take more of that into my kind of mm. social media career is take more breaks and just be a bit more like having days to myself but yeah as long as you pick yourself up and just do it because there's always someone regardless of who you are if you're making content online there's always someone who enjoys your videos and to make that person's day is like better it's better than anything so yeah any impact is still an impact. Doesn't Amen. matter how many I agree. people. Doesn't matter how how many people. You can impact a million people. One person, it's still making an impact, and you never know how far that can go. So exactly. I mean, that's what you people keep... should always think about when they're making content, not just because they want to create it to have money or create it because yeah. they want validation from other people. They're just creating it because they love it and they want to help yep. other people that, that that's the true definition of an influencer i feel like yes just wanting to that. help people that's the most important thing not doing it for anything else and not wanting mm -hmm. something back in return um especially um so we're going to go to our final question before we get into questions from the viewers that they've been sent that they've been sending in and the last question is what would you like to achieve in the future do you still see yourself continuing social media do you want to do acting do you want to do anything else that maybe yeah just connects with your content perhaps yeah well i want to continue to do social media i think that would be like it's also like it's something that's therapeutic for me regardless of kind of where it takes me in terms of doing it you know i do it full time at the moment so it's kind of like what's the next step but i love it like entertainment and you know doing stuff like you know presenting and i was like that made me on a mission show or um, other stuff like the playlist that we're on is all on is kind of like it's all fun but it's, and I love to kind of like and make people happy and, and, and joyful so I think I'd love to do more entertainment presenting and I studied acting at college years ago so that was always like a dream for me to do acting um, but I don't know how that plays into kind of my you know plan if there even has a plan but I'd love to do more entertainment work like on TV working with like companies like, like BBC and CBBC and things like that um, and also do more acting would be great but we know who knows what <laughs> more acting. Say, acting acting <laughs> who knows what will happen like it might be one of those things that you know you never know where life takes you like you know it's, it's crazy but yeah more entertainment and like the TV and acting would be like the perfect future for me but who knows <laughs> I can definitely envision you being a presenter or just anything that's just going to put a smile on someone's face. I can definitely just envision Thank that for you. you. A thousand percent. <laughs> a thousand percent. Um, but now we're going to get to some questions from the viewers. And the first question is from Katie. And she says, um, have your fan base inspired you in any way? We'd be a bit concerned if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, they're not, bye. Like, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, come on. Uh, absolutely they have. I think that, yeah, I, I really, a lot of, you know, who I am as a creator or, or a person online comes from the, my fan base and uh, the, show, the stories they've shared with me and uh, a lot of my fans will message me saying, thank you for this and they'll tell me some really personal stuff that I've helped them get through or, something they just need to tell someone so they they are really they're really the people that inspire me they, they, you know they're the ones that i live for and i take a lot i think a lot of people think that well creators are always giving and influencers are always giving the 
the, the people advice or people meaning in life, but it's not really, it's like the other way around. Fan base gives me a lot of um, inspiration to keep on going with their stories, um, things that they've went through, why they're on social media and why they're wanting to watch people. Because um, people are doing it for whatever reason, they're doing it for just to get away from something, to kind of be happy, to kind of get out of a situation. So I, I've just been, my fan base has inspired me in uh, the, the first since the first day I've posted on social media, they've always been the, the they were always come first for me. That content and then what, everything after that is kind of like a, a bonus for my, in my opinion. That's so beautiful. They almost just become a family. That's the yeah. best thing. One of the highlights of being a content creator, I definitely say. I totally agree. It's the best. And so the next question is from Demi Dems 8 and yeah. Demi said, "How do you have so much self confidence? I need it. You're amazing." <laughs> oh, Demi, uh, thank you so much. I think that um, it stems it stems from a, it stems from a lot of time ten from a time way back when. I'm, I'm 26 now, so like, oh, so <laughs> um, it, it stems from a, a time back, like you know, 10 years ago when I was pretending to be confident and like. You know, someone who's plus size, it's kind of like, mm, you know, that kind of that. And then um, it, it stemmed from pretending to be that and then just kind of having a moment of realisation of, oh my gosh, like, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm really not that confident and, and working through like, the techniques I have and telling myself that and, um, be, be, yeah, I don't, I don't know what word I'm trying to use, reformation, I don't know what it's called. But, um, like, and, and telling myself and realising and trying to, trying to take away the... I don't need anyone else's validation. Um, I don't. I, I don't. I don't need validation from anyone else. I need validation from myself. Once I gave myself that that validation, the confidence just kind of keeps on coming. And people think it's an art, and it's not. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just like, I'm just. I, I I love myself, but not in like that horrible narcissistic way. It's a way of like, you know, the way that I that I deserve to be. And I think that it's hard to kind of. It's, you don't get there overnight. Some people do. Some people are born with it, and they're very lucky. Um, <laughs> but I think that. It's, it's but working on yourself more and realizing and celebrating the small things that you're doing, you know, mentally, physically, whatever it is in your in your life that you're doing, celebrate that because it all works in confidence. Self confidence is not just how you look; it's how you feel, it's how you act, it's how you walk this life. So, celebrate the small um, successes that you have in a day. If that's just getting up and going downstairs, then celebrate it. The more you do that, the more you celebrate who you are and the things that you've achieved. Self confidence just comes with it, and then no one else's opinion matters, and then that's great, and then we'll all be like that, and it'll be fun. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I mean, it just, would be great. Yeah, just appreciate yourself is the best way of putting it. Just appreciate yeah. everything that you're doing. Like instead of trying to seek for validation from others, being like, Did I do well? Can you tell me well done or what else can I do? Just tell yourself that. Be proud of yeah. yourself rather than waiting for someone else to be proud of you if that makes sense as well. I completely agree. That's like, but yeah, I'm giving the long-winded answers, and you just sum it up nice and perfectly, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I talk uh, too much. You know, we've we got to have the little, we've got to have the, the dynamic duo. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. I talk too much. You just like this is what it's like in a full table. I mean, to be honest, I love guests that just are going to explain things. I mean, it's just the best type of person to have on an interview because. That just lets other people just understand where you're coming from as well. So yeah. I don't mind you. I don't mind you talking. I can speak to you all day <laughs> yes. if I could. Oh, we, I think we'd be great. We we we'd talk all the time. It'd be so much fun. I Definitely. Love it. <laughs> so the next question is. It's not really a question. It's a bit more of a statement. But um, it's from I believe. Kyan. I I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Gillen. I think it is. Gillen. Yeah. And she says, I suffered anxiety for about three years and you inspired me, so thank you. Oh, that means so much to me. Like, that, like, right now is, like, key in, like, that, that's the people that inspire me. You know what I mean? That, that's, like, mm. key in that is, like, um, suffering from that and still being here and, and, and finding ways to kind of get through that inspires me. And I can relate a lot because I suffer from a lot of anxiety. Still do, and I think that a lot of people do, and it's something that's not, it's too big to talk about when it shouldn't be. Um, it's a very, very not a common thing. It's very, it's very normal for people of all ages to have that. And so hearing that is like makes me feel like I'm doing something right in this world. If someone says like I'm inspiring them, because they're inspiring me right now to be like, you know what, what I'm doing is right. So thank you so much. And I, I know where you're coming from. So I need a lot. 
The next question is from George Nurse and they said, Hi Stephen, I'm a huge fan. My question is, how do you keep confidence from hate comments? It's kind of the similar answer to the last mm-hmm. question, to the question before previously. Yeah, I think that, I think a lot of things, what I never spoke about before is having like a network of people. It doesn't have to be a lot of people, but my mum, my, my best friend Lucy, um, you know, sometimes I read, I have, I'm confident I read comments about, especially, especially some content that I usually say, me, you put something out there and, and you're really, really passionate about it. And you're like, this is great. And someone's like, I hate that, you're this. And you're like, but why? Because it's great, <laughs> you know? But I think having some, a, a strong network, if you don't have a strong network of people that are around you, you can speak to, um, it's just about making sure that when you're putting things into the world or regardless of what it's social media is taking away, making sure that confidence is unshakable and that if someone's got an opinion of it it's like okay I can see what you're, what you're saying and I don't need their opinion I'm not going to take advice from it but I have a good I have a good support network that if I am feeling like oh that person's commented this like I'll be on house party to my friend um, Lucy who's in the chat lover um, and I'll read some comments and she'll be like and, and some of them I'll read them face like it doesn't matter and I'm like yeah no it doesn't matter I don't know why you know, so sometimes if you've got that a little support network of people that can put you in the right direction sometimes, because I'm not 100% always in the right direction. My mum puts me in check sometimes, which is my friend. So um, you probably might be in a similar sense that, I, that I've got, my mum's quite a confidant for me, and she's one of the people that I go to for a lot of things. So, and she's very invested in what I'm doing. So I, yeah, I have, a, have some people there that kind of keep me on the straight and narrow and keep that confidence going. I've actually I mean, been a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm same here as well. I mean, my mum is like my biggest support system, to be honest, mm-hmm. as well. Um, I just, yeah, I totally disagree with everything that you were saying. Just have someone there who's going to bring you up higher and kind of up- uplift your spirit and hype you up when you need it. That, that's that's the best type of support system. Just the people who are going to hype you up regardless of anything. They're just going to mm-hmm. make you feel much better after anything that happens whether oh, it's getting with you online or just not having a great day just because mm-hmm. because that's really how life works usually yeah um but the next question is from it's dot underscore dot has and i love this question it is what is the best tiktok that you have made in your own opinion oh there's so many it's not a lot of challenge anyway I've got the, um, oh, so for many. four years uh, there must be lots of videos to choose lots from of them. there's a lot of them i think Oh, there's there's just so many of them. There really is. I love doing this trunch ball. They're really funny. Um, I love kind of getting into character to do those things. Anything that's very um, that's impactful or information or supporting um, you know causes are, are really close to my heart because I feel like you know one person reading that is a, a one more person didn't know about a certain situation. Um, but there's so many there's there's so many videos. A lot of videos of my mum are great as well. Like the the some of them are. Because like they're just like random, and I just like, we don't plan them. We just film it and see what happens. So yeah, anything that's educational, anything with my mum, being Miss Trunchbull, um, all those kind of ones are my best ones. I can't pick one. There's too many. I've got like thousands of videos. I can't pick ones. <laughs> I mean, on my YouTube channel, I think I've got like over 800 videos. Oh my gosh, there's so many for YouTube as well. I know. Over four I've, years, I've and I see work. some people who've had channels for like 10 years, and they only have like 90 videos, and I'm like. How does how does this make any sense? But no, I know. Yeah. <laughs> every every video is your favorite. Every video impacts someone, so that that's exactly. why that's why it's 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 great for all of them. Um, Izzy thirty one underscore said, "Can you say hi, Izzy, please?" <laughs> hi, Izzy. How you doing? Oh, bless. I'm loving these people in here. They're all amazing. Um, I know everyone is so lovely. Someone said, I love the EastEnders ones. I do like the EastEnders lip thing. They don't really do well on TikTok, which is funny. They don't, they, TikTok does not like them at all. They um, run the American do... TV shows, unfortunately. Exactly. And then, they, but they do good on Twitter. Twitter loves them. Twitter's like, which is, it's so good. Like, TikTok can be exchangeable to nearly every single platform. So I think that's another good thing about it, with me rambling on. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, another question is from Kaylee Maxwell, one, two, three. And she said, can you say hi to me? A lot of the questions hi, Kaylee. can you say hi to me. <laughs> hi, Kaylee. Hi, everyone here. I love that. There's, there, oh, everyone's just so nice. I love that. I love when everyone's just being supportive and positive. But hello. Hope you're okay. Hope you're doing well. 
Um, Salix on, on the comment said, um, the one you did based around anxiety to the sound that I, I tried to scream, but my head is underwater. Yeah, I think that's like those are kind of videos I love doing. It's kind of shining light on something that people might find taboo to talk about. Is like, it's okay. Everyone, it's, it's, it's people that you love and watch on TV and, and social media all the time go through exactly the same thing. But yeah. Those are my favourite types of TikToks, to be honest. Like mm -hmm. POVs, I love watching POVs, but when it's like based on like mental health, it only does it educate you so much and kind of just gives you a bit more in depth mm -hmm. of like how what other people experience on a daily basis, unfortunately. But then it's also like, it's just so impactful, and people are using their platforms to just show awareness to certain things. Yeah, I, I totally I respect anyone that's going to use a platform for, um, you know educating it and talking about issues that we need to talk about whether it be on like live streaming or put it on, on their profile page or whatever as um i always find those videos most engaging the ones that i relate to a lot, a lot of them so um the pov ones are definitely i always watch them as well like, i don't care if they start bad or whatever i want to see what happens at the end pov ones always get me. yeah definitely <laughs> it almost like it's almost like you're on your own movie people yeah, create I'm... movies somehow or a whole Cinematic experience, emotional roller coaster in 60 seconds. And you're invested, especially all of the part TV one. networks need to. They just need to cast all these people. Oh, I know for <laughs> sure because like these people could produce some really great stuff. Especially if you see like part one, you're like, yes, I'm gonna go in there. Or if you see it, it says like part twenty or whatever, you're like, great, they've got a whole I'll series that I can watch. Through. <laughs> I'm like all of the videos. <laughs> but you I look at your that. screen time and it's like five hours on TikTok. Wonder what I was doing. <laughs> Me at two o'clock in the morning, like, where's the part one? I think it's like it's I, you know I, what? I saw someone post um about TikTok features that that features that TikTok should have. One of them was that people can link their parts of videos like under something. So for example, if you went to the comments it would just show you like a bit of like a playlist of uh -huh. all the parts so you wouldn't have to scroll down or something that was on your for you page for like four months four months ago and it oh, would just be there and i was like tiktok please make this feature it would yeah, help me yeah. so much it would save me so much time scrolling down on someone's profile then giving up them thinking i saw something and scrolling all the way back oh, again. sure i mean that's exactly the same it's like it's, there's a lot of features that tiktok can put in there that we, think is, that we think is very simple and that you should just turn it on it's like just touch the switch it's fine but really it's like probably millions to do but we need it so TikTok if you're watching and I'll TikTok follow me on Instagram it's, so, it's uh, a new priority <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> <I love laughs> it's it. a new priority we need it we need it ASAP <laughs> we just need it as soon as possible this yeah, is something, that, it's something we need <laughs> it's going to say it's going to save us a lot of time and we all know that time is our most important asset. <laughs> yes, I don't want to waste it. I'll scroll and down, get that in there, and we can be fine. It'll be fun. It'll save me a lot. I say it will save me a lot of time on TikTok. It wouldn't. It'd make me go on it more and spend more time than I already do. So but, you know, but, but, we, we we don't we don't expose ourselves like that. No. <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't no, 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 no one knows. No, no one will ever know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of the final question. But where can we find your social media um, to keep up with your journey? It's just at Stephen McKell on TikTok, at Stephen underscore McKell on Instagram, and at Stephen McKell on Twitter. And like, it's just all at Stephen McKell, really. It's very easy, very subtle. No one has the same name, so it's great. I don't have to fight anyone for it. So um, yeah, it's just at Stephen McKell. And you know, it's just a guy making funny videos, sometimes sad videos, sometimes just strange videos, and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a variety but, of different content for different emotions. Yeah, a chameleon, <laughs> I can do I can do it all. Just not ballerina, but I can try. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I do a lot of videos. But yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. It's been really fun. I always love doing these kind of um, like interview things as well. And sometimes it can be like, oh, no. But like, this one's been really great because like we've met each other last year. So I'm in the city, which is madness. Um, um, but yes, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're doing so well. And your movie yes, that you're you. filming, oh my gosh. Yes, it's the, the short film. It's me for me in less than two oh. weeks. I'm going crazy. Madness, what's it called? Is it called Step Back? Step Back. Yes, Step, step Back. Oh, I've been following. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, on that LinkedIn, on that Instagram. But it's, um, yeah, no, I was watching the, the kind of the interview with the producer, I think it was. 
um, like you showed on your story and I was like, I think they'll have your cast on, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. which is exciting. I can't wait to see that, it'll be really fun. I, I mean, I can't wait to see it either. I mean, we haven't even started filming yet. So when we finish filming, I'm just going to be like, guys, can you just like edit it like so far so we can like see yeah. it still? <laughs> and you're like, this I'm, is, I'm super is excited. This a YouTube video, like, cannot be done in overnight editing, but it's not. But no, I think congratulations. It's been so great to kind of Thank see you, you doing your own thing and like, especially like the inspiring Vanessa show on like Amazon as well. Like, she's slaying it. Thank you so much. Um, I do my homework. I don't think I do, but I do. But it'd be great, <laughs> you, you did you know, your research. <laughs> did research. I know, but I think that we could in the future. Who knows if we're presenting together on like a TV show? Like, how amazing I'd love that to. be? Or imagine you get your own TV show, and then I'm a guest, and I'm like, Hi, of course, love you, that. you're always you're always welcome to anything in the future. You, you love it, but you've got, like, you've got an open you've got an open pass, VIP tickets. <laughs> You can never get that because I'm like, is it, I'm going to be probably like, no, Stephen, like, it's go away. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's been really fun coming on here and having a chat with you. I hope everyone else enjoyed it, which I think they did. Um, and I think that it's great for some of the people that follow me on Instagram to see you and go follow you on Instagram and TikTok. And it'll be been awesome. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much for being my guest today. It was so, so lovely speaking to you. Um, hopefully, next year, when everything is kind of cleaning up, clearing up that we can meet each other again at another convention or sometime yes. after that anyways but once again thank you for just accepting to be my guest for this interview it was oh, so no. lovely speaking to you <laughs> thank you so much and hope you have an awesome night and uh, i shall speak to you soon <laughs> definitely i'll speak to you soon as well thank you so much for joining Thanks. bye Thanks, bye so that is the end of today's interview i hope you really enjoyed it enjoy it just as much as i did make sure to go and follow Stephen on all of his social media platforms if you don't already do so and go and check out my show which is on amazon prime called the inspiring vanessa show there'll be more episodes coming out soon so stay tuned for that i'm very very excited i'm um, going to check out all the other like instagram live interviews i've done um they are all up on my youtube channel and also on my igtv so go and check those out otherwise thank you also so much for those who tuned in commented sent in your questions we all appreciate you and love you so so much thank you so much for tuning in have an amazing night and also have an amazing week i'll speak to you all soon bye everyone